marijuana. <laughs> it felt cheesy, but I liked it. No matter what you call it, reefer, cannabis, marijuana, weed, kush, loud, whatever you call it, man. Over the years, you've been warned about the dangers of this plant. Marijuana leads to doing worse things. That's just a fact. One out of six kids who tries marijuana as a teenager will become addicted. Now they're getting these young kids coming in, having heart attacks at very young ages, and it's because they're potheads. Well, we've also heard that it's a potent medicine, good for treating everything from insomnia to cancer. More and more states are allowing it for medical use. Some are even allowing it for recreational use. You know, just for fun. But does this herb, famous for turning people into Netflix, binge-watching, Cheetos face-stuffing zombies, really have any medical benefits, or is it just potheads blowing smoke trying to justify their high? Today I'm not talking about legalizing marijuana for recreational use. That's for another time. I'm talking about if there's actually any health benefits to the devil's grass. If you ask the federal government, they just say no. Now for a little historical context. Back in 1970, Congress passed the Controlled Substance Act. This is the federal law that makes marijuana illegal all across the U.S. Quick sidebar. There are state laws and federal laws. Federal laws apply to all states, while state laws just apply to those states. So with medical marijuana, some state laws conflict with federal ones. It's up to the executive branch to enforce the law, and the Obama administration has chosen not to prosecute states where medical marijuana is legal. Of course, that can all change under the Trump administration and it's up to Congress to change the federal law. Okay, now back to the Controlled Substance Act. It lists marijuana as a Schedule I drug, usually reserved for dangerous drugs with no medical benefits. Ones like heroin and LSD. By comparison, Xanax is a Schedule IV drug. But being Schedule I is actually kind of a big deal, and not just because of the criminal penalties. Researchers have to jump through hella hoops just to get their hands on weed. They have to get the approval of three different agencies, the DEA, the FDA, and the NIDA just to study it. This can take forever. But even though it's tough to study, there has been research on it, a lot of it from outside of the US. So in our journey to figure out the medical benefits of marijuana, we looked at a lot of studies. And basically, there's two groups. One that focuses solely on the dangers of marijuana, if it's addicting, if it causes psychosis or lung or heart disease. And then there's the group that looks at medical marijuana for health benefits. We focused on those. There's a good reason why so many researchers all over the world want to study cannabis more closely. It contains a bunch of compounds called cannabinoids, which affect so many different parts of your body. They can influence things like our memory, cognition, motor movement, and pain perception. There are over 100 cannabinoids in marijuana. THC and CBD are the most studied ones. And THC, that's the one that gets you high. One recent paper in a respected journal looked at a bunch of clinical trials involving marijuana. It found these benefits. Marijuana has been shown to improve chronic pain, pain from cancer, multiple sclerosis, nausea and vomiting, sleep disorders, and Tourette's syndrome. Ask your doctor if marijuana might be right for you. Common side effects include dizziness, dry mouth, nausea, fatigue, confusion, balance problems, and euphoria. Keep in mind, smoking too much of anything can cause respiratory problems. But despite weed's medical potential, the FDA, the agency responsible for signing off on medications, has not approved the marijuana plant. Why? It's all about weighing the risk and the benefits. In order for any medication to get the okay from the FDA, it has to go through hella clinical trials just to make sure it's safe. So while the FDA hasn't approved the plant itself, it has approved two drugs containing THC. They're pills used to treat AIDS symptoms as well as pain and nausea from chemotherapy. In states where medical marijuana is legal, what doctors can recommend it for varies state by state. So marijuana is in a weird catch-22. The federal government still classifies it as a potentially dangerous drug with zero medical benefits. But research keeps emerging that tells a different story. So some states are bypassing federal law so patients can access it anyway. Basically, the states are betting that the benefits of weed are going to outweigh the risk. But what do you think? What should the government do about this? Let us know in the comments below like really like leave comments not mean ones like suggestive you know constructive good ones all right then y'all 